Hi everyone, I'm Javier Luraski, and in this Use R2020 talk, we are gonna learn how to use the PINS package to make your data science workflow reproducible even when you're using data sets. So a lot of the common kind of like uh, anti-patterns that I've seen when using data sets is that, uh, well, they fall into two categories. So the first one is uh, we overuse iris and empty cars because it's just hard to get data. So we just fall back to the easiest uh, data sets to use. And the other one, a lot of times we don't include our data set in the code that we're trying to uh, share or reproduce, right? So, um, you know, you can see a couple examples on the slides that I found from our bloggers where the data set is missing or where it requires you to provide manual steps to actually download the data set. And that creates friction and ultimately leaves code that is broken. Now, in general, we talk a lot of times of the core data science workflow, which was po popularized by R for data science. And in this workflow, we start by importing data, then tidying it, understanding and communicating, which is all good. But a lot of times we also need to figure out where the data is. We need to search for data and we need to bring the data from a remote location into our local computer. And a lot of times we also want to share this data set with our colleagues, uh, friends, or the world. And this is what I call discover, cache, and share, which is something that the PINS package uh, was designed to help you resolve. And in general, reproducibility is important. I don't even need slide for this, but tools like Jupyter, our notebooks, and our markdown were designed with reproducibility in mind. So we want to make sure that our data sets are part of this workflow and are not left behind with manual instructions, uh, you know, hard to configure permission uh, dependencies and why not. We want, we want to be able to take code, rerun it, even if it has data sets attached to it. So what do we want from a package and a tool? Well, I think we have a, we want a few characteristics. One, we want, uh, we want to make sure that we have a single tool. We want to avoid relearning different tools for different storage locations. Second, we don't want to be locked in with a specific storage provider. S say that we're using uh, Amazon S3 and then we want to move to Google Cloud. It should be easy to move from one cloud provider to the other one uh, without having to relearn or change our code. A third, the tool should allow us to also create automated workflows that don't require authentication, right? Because uh, that way we can also automate our data workflows and uh, just make uh, workflows that are more efficient. Uh, fourth, uh, it needs to work with any type of data. And by any type of data, I mean any size from small data sets to large data sets that ideally are hosted in things like HDFS, to uh, really scale up uh, the type of data sets that you can store. Uh, fifth, it should help us find interesting data sets because we are all tired of using iris and empty cars, so wouldn't it be nice to use additional, more interesting data sets? Uh, sixth, uh, it needs to be fast, right? We don't want to be waiting for our data sets to load. And ideally, we also wanted to, uh, to make sure that it works off offline when we don't have an internet connection. Uh, these are all things that we consider when designing the PINs package. Uh, the PINs package uh, allows you to pin uh, a remote resource or a local resource into your local machine or into remote machines. It allows you to discover data sets and it, it allows you to share resources with others in multiple services like Kaggle, R Studio Connect, uh, GitHub, S3, Azure, Google Cloud Compute, and DigitalOcean. Uh, the PINs package is now on CRAN. Uh, you can download the latest version, which is 0.4.1. And to use it, it's actually quite straightforward. So after you install from CRAN and after you run library pins, all you have to do to, is to save an object is say, pin the R object that you are interested in storing, and then a name. In this case, we're saying numbers. And then you can retrieve the pin using uh, the name. You say pin get numbers. Uh, if you are retrieving a remote data set, you can also specify a remote URL. Uh, in this case, we're retrieving a smaller version of ImageNet from a zip file, all with one line of code, and then we're retrieving it uh, from our local storage using pin get. You can also use pin find to find data sets. And not only that, but also this is nicely integrated with uh, our studio for those uh, our studio users out there. So uh, what is a board? Uh, well, a board is a concept from the pins package that describes a storage location. So it's basically anywhere that allows you to store data. And currently we have uh, 
seven different uh, storage providers that the Pins package support. You can store data sets in RStudio Connect, Kaggle, GitHub, S3, DigitalOcean, Google Cloud, and Azure. And it's basically quite easy to store data sets in, uh, in a remote location to share with others. And all you have to do is uh, include one line before you start using the Pins package, which is Borg Register. So Borg Register will enable this particular data set. Uh, so will enable this particular uh, storage provider to store your data sets. And then all you have to do is whenever you pin an object, like the numbers one to 10, you want to specify board equals and say GitHub, S3, RStudio Connect, or whatever. And yeah, that's that's the way it works. Uh, then you can do, do pin get to retrieve your data set. And you can optionally also specify the board name if you want to make sure that you're retrieving the data from a very specific board. Uh, so that's that's how it works. Uh, if you had to manage permissions or look at the content or whatever, well, obviously this is different between different storage providers, right? Like if you were to go to our Studio Connect, the user interface that you would get from each storage provider is different. And also the defaults that they allow you to change as in permissions and settings are a little bit uh, different. So let's just take a look at a quick quick example. So in this case, uh, this is the PINs website, and you can navigate to use cases to take a look at a few things that actually uh, are common cases of uh, using the PINs package. So the first one is reusing data sets. So as I was mentioning, a lot of times we spend a lot of time cleaning data sets. So uh, we find a data set, we clean it, and uh, we want to share it with others. And in this case, uh, we're just executing one line to share this data set in our Studio Connect. But you can run very similar code to share it in GitHub or um, cloud providers and why not? And you get a preview uh, of the data set, but more importantly, you also get a line that you can use to basically retrieve this data set from an R session with ease. Uh, a few other uh, use cases, uh, you can automate the data set update. So if you have a data set that a lot of people are consuming, uh, you can basically create a GitHub action or an RStudio Connect automated report to update this data set uh, in an automated fashion. And not only that, but you can also create multiple pipelines. You can have uh, two data sets that are automatically generated and then a third report that uses the previous two data sets to update something else or why not. And last but not least, uh, also a pretty great use pattern of the PINs package is to um, use it to preload data in Plumber and Shiny applications, right? So in this case, we have a deep learning model that trains overnight and takes a long time to compute and requires GPUs and why not. Uh, but after we finish uh, processing this data set, what we do is we create a pin, which then a Shiny application can make use of by simply loading the data from a pin. Uh, not, not only that, but uh, the, um, the Shiny application uses uh, what we call a pin reactive, which is defined on the pins package, which allows you to uh, update the data set uh, reactively without having to require the entire data set. So uh, it's kind of like um, the pins package is smart enough to only bring data when it has changed. And that's exactly what pin reactive is doing with your Shiny application. Uh, there's a few other features worth mentioning. The first one is that you can support multiple versions. If you're familiar with GitHub, you already expect the pins package to allow you to retrieve previous versions, but you can also use versioning with boards like S3, uh, RStudio Connect, Kaggle, and why not? Some of them, like the cloud boards, require you to opt in since it uh, comes with additional costs to start multiple versions. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, versioning is supported in all the package in all the uh, boards that the pins package supports. You can also extend the pins and the boards. Uh, so say for instance, that you are dealing with a proprietary file system in your organization or something that simply the uh, pins package does not support. Uh, you can obviously send us a pull request, but you can also create a package that implements four operations, which are create, find, pin, uh, retrieve and remove. If you can implement these four operations, you can have a fully functioning board, uh, whatever storage provider that may be. 
And in addition, you can also configure how each particular R object is stored. For instance, when we store a data frame, it gets stored as a native R object and also as a CSV file for easy interoperability. But you can choose to store a ggplot or plots in general objects with their screenshot as well. And this is something that you can configure with an S3 method over the uh, pin uh, verb. Uh, last but not least, uh, this is actually a feature that I think is quite great and almost no one knows about. Um, whenever you store data in a board, uh, what the pins package uses is what we called the data.txt specification. This specification is just a YAML file that describes the location of your data sets and the metadata. Uh, so it's quite simple. It's just, a, it's just a text file that describes your data sets. Uh, but what you can do with these data, uh, with this specification, is use tools like the data txt package, um, which allows you to generate a website for your data sets that are already uh, available in the data.txt specification. So whenever you create a, a pin in an S3 bucket, you also get by default uh, this uh, data txt specification, which they, then you can use to point a custom domain name and uh, basically uh, pre-create this website out of the definition of your data sets. And this is how it looks like. So um, this is the uh, seller subproject on the casa.ai uh, project, which uh, contains a data sets uh, site with five different insurance related data sets. And uh, you know, in this case, uh, you can see that the data set has uh, you know, some of the contents and some of the um, you know, like uh, column descriptions and summaries that you would expect. Uh, but what it's also really awesome is apart from being able to see this website, uh, once you have made your data sets public, you can easily interoperate with them from our studio or R in general uh, with a single call, which is a pins board register, and then the path to your uh, domain that contains the data.txt file. And you get uh, in the connections pane, you can see all your data sets being displayed. And you can also view them. You can also pin get them. And you can also, for instance, uh, find them and why not. All right, well, uh, thank you so much for attending this talk. If you want to learn more about the pins package, the best resource to go at is uh, pins.rstudio.com. Uh, if you want to keep in touch with you know updates on the pins package, we are putting uh, all of the updates that our team is working on on their blogs, rstudio.com slash AI. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel where you can learn how to use big data technologies, deep learning, and data management technologies like MLflow and pins on their youtube.com slash uh, C slash MLverse. Or you can contact us directly on Twitter. Uh, myself at uh, Javier Luraski in Twitter, uh, Kevin Ikuo for uh, Data TXT and Insurance Data Related uh, Solutions, Alex Gold, which has been um, advocating for using uh, pins with our Studio Connect, and the rest of our team members on the Multiverse team, uh, Daniel Sigrid and Yitauli. Thank you so much.